and my kitchen. Today's episode is focused on an all-American classic and something that we take for granted, and that's the hamburger. I recently had an email from Annika in Germany. She and some friends have recently taken a trip to the U.S. and fallen in love with all things American. So she asked me to prepare my recipe for hamburgers. She's having a party this summer and like to make them for her friends over there in Germany. So let's go inside and get started. The All-American Hamburger with my special twist. And I want to get started and explain the ingredients to you, but the first ingredient and the most important is your beef. I have one pound of ground beef here. I grind my own beef, and when I do that, I try to get 80% um, meat to 20% fat. If you buy this in the grocery store or at your butcher, you could ask them for 80, 20, or 70, 30 beef, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. And one other important note about the beef is you really want the most flavorful. I ground up chuck, um, which tends to give a, light, a nice flavor to the hamburgers. And I try to avoid buying my meat at a chain grocery store. There are several of them out there. I'm not going to name names. Um, but when you buy your ground meat from there, it's actually coming in from factories where thousands of cows are processed every day and you never really know what you're getting. So I say please be careful. When you buy your meat, go to a butcher that grinds their own meat right there in their shop or to stores like Whole Foods and other more organic grocery stores that take more care in the process of their beef products. That's important. I don't want to lecture, but that, that it's important. This is the star of the show and you want a really nice meat. Aside from that, what we're going to do is, or what we'll need is one onion, well I should only use half of that, a tablespoon of salt, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, a tablespoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and a tablespoon of chili powder. And all you do to get this put together is we're going to take our onion, I have a grater here, you can do this on a box grater, we're going to grate half of this into our meat. I've gotten half the onion grated up into our meat. I left out one important ingredient, and that's one egg. You want to crack this into your meat. This is going to act as a binder as it cooks. It's going to hold that meat together nicely. So just add the salt, the pepper, and the other ingredients. And lastly, we're just going to add a few dashes of the Worcestershire sauce, like I said. All right, and then with your hands, make sure they're nicely washed. We're just going to combine this. And this is one mistake a lot of people make when they're combining their meat, is you overwork it. The more you work this meat, you're going to squeeze out a lot of that fat, and it's actually going to make your meat crumbly and taste dry. Um, and by adding the onion, that's going to increase the moisture level in this recipe, which is what you want, but you still want to avoid overworking the meat. So I'm just loosely using my fingers to kind of incorporate all these ingredients. Just loosely working all those ingredients together. As you see, I've not packed any of the ingredients. It's still very loose. All the ingredients are nicely incorporated. So what I want to do is take my hand in the bowl, and I'm just going to kind of divide this into four equal portions. So when we get going, we know what we're going to be working with. A pound gives you four nice-sized hamburgers. Then take one of those portions, grab it up, and this is when you want to pack it into your... Um, hamburger patty. Loosely to start, get the shape going. Um, some people prefer to do this as a meatball to start and then flatten it out, whatever works for you. And I have a uh, cookie sheet here ready to go. I've lined that with um, aluminum foil, which will just make cleanup a little bit easier. And I'm doing this about three to four hours prior to when I'm going to put them on the grill. That will give them time to go in the refrigerator, let all of these um, flavors start to meld together, and then we'll get them on the grill. So I'm going to finish uh, packing these up. As you can see, the hamburgers are all formed into patties. I've got my hands all washed up. Got them on the tray. We're going to put these into the refrigerator. And let them set up for, like I said, a few hours. I'm probably going to let them sit for about four hours. We'll come back, we'll get them on the grill, and we'll be ready to eat. The hamburgers have been in the refrigerator just about four hours. I've taken them out. I've heated up my grill. It's about 500 degrees. That temperature will drop down after I start cooking. But you do want to keep it really hot. That's one thing that you want to do when you're using the grill like this because it gets those really nice professional grill marks on it. So we're just going to take our hamburgers, put them on, and let them go. I'm going to leave them just like this for about two and a half, three minutes. Then I'm just going to rotate them about 90 degrees, let them sit about another two minutes, then flip them over. That'll give us those nice crosshatch marks that you get when you go to a really nice steakhouse. So we'll come back in about uh, two or three minutes. All right, it's been just about three minutes. I'm going to get this burger, rotate it just about 90 degrees, 
and give it a turn. We're going to do the rest of these, let them go for another two or three minutes. Burger flipped over. So about five, six minutes on the first side. We're going to let these go for about three minutes, turn them, let them go for another three minutes, then we'll get them off the grill. Let's get this last burger off the grill. I put cheese on two and I left two plain just so people can have their choice. Take these inside and get it plated up. So here we go, I have it, the plate started. What I normally do with french fries, just to make them look really fun to eat, especially with kids, is just fold up a nice paper cone. I do this with parchment paper and it looks really neat. And people love it. Um, a little secret also for your buns, on the bottom bun, take a little bit of mayonnaise, just a thin layer, and put that on the bottom. And then the same on the top, we use mustard. The mayonnaise and the mustard will keep the juices from the burger to, from seeping down into the bread, which will keep the burger together and not too mushy. So I've done that. I'm going to take one of the patties, put that right on the bottom. Maybe some lettuce, a tomato, and some onions. Right on there. The top goes on. And that looks really, really good. I've got to take a bite of this burger. I cannot wait. They smell delicious. They really are. You know what? That grated onion in the burger gives it a really nice moist, moistness to it and gives it really great flavor. So I hope you'll try this recipe for burgers. It's delicious and people will really, really like it. So as always, thanks so much for watching. And please feel free to email me at scottindenver at msn.com should you want to make a comment about the show or ask me like Annika did to prepare a particular recipe for you. So as always, take care. Bye.